We live in an age where blaming it on the camera is no longer an option. The Sony A7 Mark IV is the final link in the chain that connects every content creator with the world of cinema. The image this camera produces rivals any high-end cinema camera, yet it's packed with features not found in the most expensive cameras. Features that enable solo shooters to function on the highest level, even on the lowest budget. What's up everybody, Jock Crawford here with an exciting behind the scenes look at the film Where Worlds Meet. If you haven't seen it yet, you know what to do. Now for full disclosure, Sony did commission me to create this film as part of the launch for Middle East Africa. Although all of the views reflected in this BTS are 100% my own. The title of the film was inspired by two things. First in a literal sense, because it's about a guy who travels between two worlds but also because this camera bridges the gap between the high-end cinema look and what's possible in the hands of the everyday content creator. Now the A7 Mark III was widely accepted as the hybrid shooter's camera of choice due to its ability to shoot photos and video really well. For now, I'm only going to focus on the video side of the camera because the A7 Mark IV is more than sufficient to be used exclusively for filmmaking. Right off the bat, the biggest upgrade is the bump in dynamic range, accompanied by a bunch of new codecs. Dynamic range has always been one of the main things I look for in a camera, and this is where cinema cameras always had the edge over previous generation mirrorless cameras. Not anymore. With 15 stops and a 10-bit codec, shooting in S-Log3 has never been easier, and with the built-in gamma assist, getting the right exposure is as simple as looking at a standard picture profile, with no need to look at an overexposed flat image. To test the limits, I shot a lot of scenes in high contrast, and it's amazing to see how much you can still do in post to achieve the optimal dynamic range. In this film, I used the gimbal a little more than usual, but still, my favorite shots ended up being the ones I shot handheld. I have yet to prove this, but I did feel like the Active Steady does a better job than before. For movements where I had to walk further than an arm's length, it felt like the camera was on a gimbal, most notably seen when filming the dancer. Active Steady also works incredibly well on longer focal lengths, and the shots I did with the 7200mm looks like I used a tripod. Now even though the new menu resembles that of the A7S III, the A7 Mark IV is even more customizable, with a few advantages over the S3. One of these features is the ability to change your codec and frame rates via shortcuts on the camera, something you always had to go in the menu for. This comes in really handy when you shoot scenes at varying frame rates, like I did, jumping between 25 frames per second and 50 frames per second. Another bonus is now you have the option to close the shutter on demand to protect the sensor from dust during lens swaps. The A7 Mark IV has all of the focusing benefits of the A7S III, enabling solo shooters to get amazing results not possible on the most expensive cinema cameras. No need for big rigs or a focus puller. Now there are still some shots that simply don't work in autofocus, like this one with the pillars moving in front of the lens. By switching to manual focus in the menu and not on the lens, you still have the ability to do autofocus on demand which means you can grab focus using autofocus and then leave it in manual focus. A real time saver. There's much to be said about this production and I will be sharing an extensive breakdown later. My conclusion about the A7 Mark IV is simple. If budget is stopping you from getting the A7S Mark III, this is the next best alternative and with it you get that amazing stills performance. If you're a hybrid shooter and photography is a high priority, there's simply no better camera that's going to give you the best of both worlds. Now a project like this isn't possible without the help of an amazing team. So make sure you check out the credits below as well as a few links to the gear I used. If you have any questions, feel free to drop me a comment. And as always, if you want to see more of this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.